to call this regular Bristol Borough Council meeting to order. This time, would everybody please rise for a moment of silence and let's remember all of those who passed away during the month. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Gerard. Present. Mr. Riccio. Here. Mr. Devine. Here. 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 Ms. Rodriguez. Here. Mr. Catrocci. Present. Mr. Deppi. Here. So we have some uh, awards and certificates to give out this evening. And the first one we're going to start with uh, Councilwoman Lorraine Collin wants to honor the St. Mark's Junior Varsity Police Basketball. And, and Greg Pez is going to hand them out. He went to St. Mark's School. He played on St. Mark's JV and varsity teams. And, um, and I'm the same height I was in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been around a lot of teams in my life because my husband has coached a lot. This team is a special team with special parents, special grandparents. Um, the kids are such good kids, and I was proud to be your scorekeeper. But um, my husband helped Brian Townsend out, and my daughter Morgan also helped out. And they loved being with this team. So we're going to recognize them for being the JV Boys Region 19 champs. And um, they had 19 wins and one loss. So pretty incredible. The group are looking forward to next year, and I'm sure it's going to be just as good, if not better. Okay, um, I'm going to announce your names, then you can come up, and Greg will give you a certificate, because the Camp Borough Council is recognizing you for your hard work and your achievement. So, Aiden Bogger. <laughs> up here, because we're going to get a picture, okay? Robert Burns. Darwin Gomez. Morris Ivory, I don't think you're here, are you? Let's clap for Morris Ivory. Light. Mondragon, Nevin. Neves Nieves, however you say it, Eddie Rosado isn't here as well, right? Let's stop for Eddie, Jacob Stewart. And last but not least, David Tyrell. <laughs> Coaches, uh, Morgan Cullen. Carolyn Giglio, who helped me with the score because I didn't have my glasses. <laughs> Picture of the group, come up and take it, please, up here. You guys, get together. Everybody get together. Come on. Some of you guys get in front, guys. Come on, you guys. Are... <laughs> yeah. 
He is. He is. He is. I'm going to. Um, Brian Townsend would like to say a few words. Um, before he does, I'd li also like to thank Maria Sanson, who is the principal, who's doing a great job with these kids, and Father Mooney for everything he did for us. Here you go, Brian. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Um, my name is Brian Towns, and I had the honor the last two seasons of coaching the uh, the, the fifth and sixth grade JV boys basketball team for St. Mark's. And it, it has just been a, a total honor for me. Uh, I've had uh, coaches from last year that didn't, weren't with me this year, but this year uh, I, I just want to point out that Morgan Cullen and, hey, Morgan, and Steve Cullen were the best assistants that I could have had that, and Steve, really, I was really his assistant, to be perfectly honest with you, because he's been around basketball for so long, and especially in the Bristol community. And I'm definitely a, a Bristol wannabe, but I live in the township. <laughs> but uh, I, there are some people that I like to, uh, to thank, and, and first person is to Mayor Joe Saxton, right? Council President Ralph DiGiuseppe, Council Vice President Betty Rodriguez, Council members, Greg Pezza, Dave Gerard, Tony Devine, Louis Catrocci, Tony Riccio. I want to thank Borough Manager, oh, I didn't forget you. That's okay. Right. Borough Manager Jim Dillon. Uh, special thanks to Lorraine Cullen, who actually put this all together. So, can we get a big round of applause for Lorraine? <laughs> Lorraine, Lorraine put me in contact with uh, a borough employee by the name of uh, Brittany Nelson, and I've been back and forth with her. So, there Brittany, thank you so much for, for everything you have done. <laughs> also, I want to thank Bill Salerno for, I mean, this is not easy what you guys do here all the time. So, it's just like, and I think you do a wonderful job down here in the borough, each and every one of you. Uh, Lorraine just talked about Father Mooney, uh, Maria Sansone. I want to thank Sammy LaRosa, who's our athletic director, who's not here. Um, Rita Hoffman, who's the basketball coordinator. I want to thank especially to all the parents and guardians, grandparents, to all of our fans. We had an exceptional year. Now, I want to correct one thing that Lorraine said earlier. We were 19-1, but we were the regular season champion. All right? And then we played in the playoffs against St. Ephraim's. And, bring that up. well, <laughs> because I'm going to have to deal with Billy Everett, and I don't want to do it. All right? So, anyway, but we, we had a heck of a season, and again, to all the parents and to all of our fans that came out, I mean, it, it was wonderful. And like Lorraine said a little bit earlier, we, we're gonna, just going to do it again. This summer, we've been asked to, uh, Steve and myself, uh, hopefully Morgan, we're, we're going to put on a clinic for the kids. We're talking small kids. Bristol has such a rich history as far as basketball is concerned. Uh, I graduated from, from Bishop Egan in 1974. I tried my hardest to get kicked out of there, believe me, and I wanted to come to Bristol in order to play basketball. But I, I, uh, my father was best friends with Father Dennis Sullivan, so I had to spend by all four years of Bishop Egan, which I absolutely adored, though. But if there was one other team that I would have liked to play for, it was Bristol Borough High School, All right? And uh, I want to uh, thank and my, the, last, the last person here is my wife, Carolyn, as far as she was our, she was our team everything, really. She was our team doctor. <laughs> she was our team psychiatrist for me. <laughs> And, and she did help Lorraine as far as when, because uh, Lorraine would get in, into, the, into the games. And, uh, you know, it's just, and, and Lorraine, you're here to keep score. <laughs> anyway, but it, it's been a spectacular year. And again, thank you to the Bristol Borough Council and, and uh, Lorraine especially for putting this together. Everybody, God bless. Thank you.
honoring our fire chief, Harvey Slack, for 50 years of service. 50. All right. Gives me great pleasure to be able to uh, present this proclamation on behalf of the mayor and the council. Whereas the limits and well-being of a community are not in its land or its location, but in how those who live and work in the borough live their lives. Whereas Fire Chief Herb Slack has brought pride to himself, his family, and to the borough by his extraordinary public service as a volunteer firefighter in Bristol Borough since February 1968. Whereas in 2005, council approved Fire Chief appointed to Fire Chief Slack to the position of Fire Chief of Bristol Borough Fire Department, a position he still holds today. Whereas Fire Chief Slack has established many programs benefiting the residents of Bristol, e.g. smoke detector and carbon monoxide education and installation, firefighter CPR program, annual fire protection week education, the Knox Box program, opioid addiction grants for fire officers and police officers. Whereas in 2016, Fire Chief Slack was awarded the National Liberty, Mil Mel yeah, National Liberty Museum Award of Valor for meritorious community service at the National Liberty Museum in Philadelphia. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Borough Council and the Mayor of Bristol Borough that Fire Chief Herbert J. Slack be publicly recognized and thanked for his extraordinary 50 years of public service as a volunteer firefighter and Fire Chief of the Bristol Borough Fire Department. Duly proclaimed 20th day of April 2018. I know that's not today's date, but there was a banquet held by his company in his honor, and we presented it on this day. And at this time, I'd like to congratulate the chief and thank him for everything that he does for this community. Over that entire time period, you don't get to be able to. Uh do those kind of things uh, with an organization like the fire company unless you have a lot of good people that are surrounding you and that you get excellent support from the community and from council and from the mayors over that time. And so uh, it's, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be able to um, serve this long and, and to be able to help provide protection to the citizens of Bristol Borough and I thank you all. Thank you. Thank 
Also tonight, we have a couple uh, awards that we'd like to present to various members of the police department. Uh, back in October 1st, 1962, uh, President John F. Kennedy signed Public Law 87726 that declared May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in May 15th falls as National Police Week. This is an annual uh, tribute to the law enforcement service and sacrifice. Tonight we'll recognize some of our officers for their actions for significant events that took place in 2017 and retirement of our police K-9 Kilo. But first, we have an introduction. I'd like to introduce some of our new part-time officers, Joe Dragon and Kevin Riley. Are you here? Joe and Kevin, Kevin. You want to come up front, Dragon is a former Bristol Township officer, graduate of the Montgomery County Police Academy. He has advanced training in accident investigation, police cyclist, and has served as a field training officer. Kevin Riley is currently a police officer with the Bucks County Rangers. He's also a graduate of Montgomery County Police Academy and has worked for, the Buc for Bucks County Court House Security in the past. And again, we just want to thank council. We want to introduce these two gentlemen to you because, as you know, um, more people on the street, the better it is for us. Uh, Joan, uh, Welcome. Welcome. Chief and I will present the commendations, but I think we're going to do Kilo first. Yeah. the oldest working dog in Bucks County police history. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the highlights that the dog has done for us. And, you know, we call him a dog, but he's, he's truly one of us. And in my experience with canines, what their value they bring to law enforcement is incredible. Kilo has found numerous narcotics for Bristol and surrounding departments, including the FBI and Attorney General's office. He has found different narcotics amounts over the years, from pallets full uh, in warehouses to small bags hidden on subjects. He has performed numerous building searches, finding subjects hiding in areas such as closet, crawl spaces, basements, and searching alone with his handler or with various officers without incident. He has found several subjects who have been tracked for miles through water, woods, and hard surfaces. From his first track of the operator of a stolen vehicle in the area of Maple Beach, his last track was finding several strong-arm robbery suspects in Brixel Township who had robbed a pizza delivery man. He has fearlessly and without hesitation come to the defense of his handler and other officers on many occasions without incident. He's been used for crowd control and still been able to walk through crowds of people in ease with such as our Italian Day functions and other gatherings that we have in the borough. Kilo has truly been an ambassador for the Bristol Borough Police Department. He's repeatedly gone out in public education programs and is a favorite amongst our school children and other agencies. He has earned his time just to be a dog after 10 years of police service and his favorite thing, begging for pizza from his partner, Emily Palmer. So, <laughs> Kilo and his handler, Chuck Palmer, we owe you a great debt of gratitude, and thank you. Amazing to see that how that working relationship has worked over the years. At this time, I'd like to call Sergeant Joseph Morris forward. Hi, 
On the evening of January 18, 2017, Sergeant Moore is conducting a motor vehicle stop on a vehicle going the wrong way on Radcliffe Street. The driver began to move around inside the vehicle and would not follow Sergeant Moore's commands. Sergeant Moore was able to gain compliance of the driver. Upon the arrival of backup officers, the driver was removed from the vehicle. A search of the vehicle and the driver of the vehicle and the driver resulted in the recovery of a loaded handgun, a sawed-off shotgun, and narcotics. The driver is also be found to be a convicted felon who was prohibited of possessing a firearm. Sergeant Moores is commended for his actions dealing with this subject and the removal of firearms from the street. Good job, Joe. Good job. for Sergeant Alan Haggis, he wasn't able to attend. But on September 16, 2017, at 1.30 in the morning, Sergeant Hankinson located an intoxicated female that had trespassed onto the Barrow docks and fell into the Delaware River. Sergeant Hankinson went to the aid of the female, holding on to her in the swift current until additional personnel arrived to complete the rescue. Sergeant Hankinson is commended for his diligent patrol and his actions, which resulted in a successful rescue. While on patrol at 4 a.m. on July 12, 2017, Officer Ellis observed the front door of the Bass Street Market smashed out. Officer Palmer arrived shortly after and the two began to establish a perimeter when two suspects exited the store. The two officers captured one of the suspects and the second suspect fled in the nearby vehicle. The subsequent investigation led to the identity of the second suspect and his eventual arrest. As a result of these arrests, the two sus suspects were tied to multiple commercial burglaries throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Officer Ellis and Officer Palmer are commended for their diligent patrol and their commitment to duty. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to have Sergeant Peter Faith, Officer Lee Soto, Officer Dean Johnson. You might end up having the wrong certificate, but that's okay. We'll get you to <laughs> On December 7, 2017, at approximately 1 p.m., Sergeant Peter Faith, Officer Aletha Soto, and Officer Dean Johnson were asked by the U.S. Marshal Service to check a residence on Pond Street for a wanted subject. Upon arriving, the Sergeant Faith and Officer Soto stopped the vehicle leaving the residence, while Officer Johnson set up a perimeter on the target residence. Sergeant Faith was interviewing the operator of the vehicle while Officer Soto checked the vehicle. Officer Soto signaled to Sergeant Fate that he had located a gun, at which point Sergeant Fate took hold of the subject and felt a gun under his arm. The subject attempted to gain control of the gun, at which time Sergeant Fate was able to disarm him. However, the subject broke free and fled on foot. Officer Soto and Sergeant Fate pursued the suspect toward the direction where Officer Johnson had taken a position, at which time Officer Johnson took the suspect into custody. As a result of the arrest, two loaded firearms were recovered and the original suspect wanted by the U.S. Marshal Service was taken into custody. These officers are, are commended for their actions dealing with an armed subject. Sergeant Carlos Rivera. 
<laughs> Sergeant Carlos Rivera. We want to be recognized, Sergeant Rivera, for his continuing work with the youth of Bristol Borough. Sergeant Rivera delivers the Department D.A.R.E. program to the students at Snyder Girardi and St. Mark's, teaching the dangers of drugs and meaning of consequences when making bad decisions. Sergeant Rivera is also the lead on the Children Youth Aid Panel, giving youthful first-time offenders an option other than the formal court system. Sergeant Rivera is commended for his continuing service educating and protecting the borough's most valuable resource, that being its children. Great job. On March 6, 2017, the BB&T Bank on Radcliffe Street was robbed by an individual claiming that he was armed with a gun and also had explosives. Sergeant Fate and Officer Johnson were the initial responding officers. These officers' initial investigation produced evidence that led to a possible suspect. Detective Davis joined the investigation and further information was developed, which led to the execution of a search warrant and arrest warrant for the subject, who resided in Bristol Township. The active investigation led to the arrest of the actor and a second suspect who acted as a getaway driver. These officers are commended for their investigation actions, which, took, which led to the swift apprehension of the suspect, which took place two days after the robbery. Great work. Harding. <laughs> Officer Lawrence Hardy, for your commitment to duty and proactive police work in 2017, especially in the area of illicit drug enforcement, resulting in 53 arrests for the calendar year. Officer Hardy is a go-to officer for mission on the street. His gathering of intelligence has led uh, several investigations, knowing the individuals involved in legal activity. Officer Hardy is commended for his dedication to duty and commitment to making Bristol Borough a safer place. Good job. <laughs> The officers performed CPR and along with EMS applied a defibrillator which resulted in successful resuscitation of the victim. These officers are commended <coughs> for the quick actions which resulted in the life saving of the victim. We also must recognize the actions of Station 51 and the Bucks County EMS whose emergency service partnership with us over the years have saved countless lives in this community. We thank you individual and you do a great job. I personally thank the mayor and the council for the support they've given these officers. Um, these individuals, you know, leave their families every day. Um, and as you all know, it's probably the most difficult time in history in this country, if not the world, to be a police officer. Uh, the microscope that these gentlemen operate under, the uh, second guessing, the split second decisions that they have to make, the risk that they are putting themselves out today. They are asked to police a free society and really cure the social problems of the world. And that's a pretty big burden. So I'm proud to be part of these, this group. They're some of the best street cops I've ever met. And uh, 
Thank you. I just want to say one thing. I sit down. I just I like to bring Kevin and Joe back up as part of this group. I would just like to say one thing as the president of this council. I've been sitting here for 17 years. It's an honor to bring the dignity back to this police department with the mayor and the chief. In 17 years, I have never seen anything conducted like this, yeah. and it makes me proud to be part of this this police department and this borough and for all you guys are, are doing for us because like the chief said to be a cop today is a very dangerous job but I mean we started with Kilo Chucky we sent you to school and I'm glad we made that decision a long time ago but it's an honor to see what the chief and the mayor have accomplished in a short period of time so chief you deserve an award for what you just did tonight <laughs> Mayor's communication, so Mayor, what do you have for us? Well, I think what we just went through was quite enough for me. Just the only thing I, I, I really want to talk about is the fact that... Uh, Carl, can you keep that door closed? Thank you. My phone has been ringing off the hook today. Um, my email has been on fire, and it's all centering around what was printed in the paper today about the Bristol Township uh, manager proposing an ordinance to uh, essentially discontinue the Bucks County Rescue Squad operating in Bristol Township as their 9-11 first responder. Uh, I, know, I know that uh, it's, it's Bristol Township, it's not Bristol Borough, but it, it surely impacts on us and, and potentially creates a public safety crisis for all of Lower Bucks County with removing Bucks County Rescue Squad off of the uh, priority primary 9-11 uh, response in Bristol Township. Uh, I don't know how much their funding is, but as I'm under the impression that along with taking off 9-11 also is going to remove their funding. Uh, we in Bristol Borough rely on the Bucks County Rescue Squad. Uh, surely their call volume is much higher in Bristol Township than in Bristol Borough. But I think that's I hope Bristol Township really thinks about this before they do it next, this Thursday night at their meeting. I would encourage Bristol Borough residents and residents of Bristol Township to get out there and support the Bucks County Rescue Squad because this really has the potential 
to cause a crisis in our town as well as all of Bristol Township. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to open up public participation. Anyone on this side of the room want to speak on anything, go to the podium, state your name and address. <coughs> Good evening, Ken Vexler, 300 block of Cleveland Street. I want to say congrats to Herb for his 50 years. That's pretty impressive, and uh, the, you know, it has to be in blood to be around that, that many years to do that. God bless you for that. Um, as the mayor mentioned about the, the rescue squad, that's what I wanted to touch on. I was one of the advocates two years ago when it was on our referendum. Uh, for Bristol Borough, and we increased it to a maximum two two mills, uh, which comes out to like $34 a year for the average homeowner in Bristol Borough. Anyhow, I, I don't know what they're thinking in Bristol Township. I saw the, the article in today's paper uh, about uh, Bristol Township will vote Thursday on an ordinance to replace the Bucks County Rescue Squad's current coverage area in the township with service from the Levittown Fairless Hills Rescue Squad. And even though, like I said, we're not in the township, but we're, we're part of that area and we contribute our tax money to that and if it closes, um, even if we were to, to be picked up at Levittown uh, Fairless Hill Squad, it's much further away, probably three or four times the distance of Bucks County Rescue Squad. And if they're going to add, tw say, 25,000, uh, or I'm just saying that Bristol Township's population is 50, 55,000. If, if, if Russ County Rescue Squad handles half of the township and Levittown Fairless Hills is going to pick that up, we're another 10,000 in Bristol Borough, you know, is it feasible? You know, I, I say no. Um, so I'm just here to plead to Bristol, Res Bristol Borough residents, if you, you know anybody in the township that's, you know, Croydon or this end of the township or uh, wherever, uh, you know, to, to uh, not let this happen. Um, if we're going to pay two mills, which I think is a bargain for EMS, um, I'd rather have it in my backyard than, than you know, oh, are we going to go to Ben, are we going to pick up Ben Salem to come in here? I mean, are we going to have uh, Marsville or Yardley? Is that what, you know, I mean, well, I just hope the people in Bristol Township, uh, you know, uh, rise up against this. And I, I understand that there may be some personal issues or political issues. I hope that's not the case, that they would put a political issue over public safety. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's really crazy if that's the case. But um, that's all. I just, I just hope that, um, you know, Bristol Borough should be just as concerned as that half of Bristol Township if the squad closes. Just, just to let you know, and I'm glad you're touching on this subject, and I'm sure I don't know who else is here to speak on it. We're trying to be very proactive on this. This isn't something that we're just not paying attention to. I'm sure. I called a meeting today with the fire chief, with the emergency management coordinator, with the mayor, with the chief of police, with the borough manager, the solicitor. Uh, Betty was there today. <laughs> but we're doing everything we can to be proactive. So we're not going to just wait for their vote Thursday night and get caught, you know, on this decision. So I still have confidence that maybe this can be worked out. I'm hoping, but for some reason, if it doesn't work out, then we have to protect the borough residents. That's our, that's our first concern here. We, we just thought, not to interrupt you, Mr. President, but just tonight you uh, commended two officers for uh, saving yes. someone's life for having yes. a 52 year old that's I'm north of that right. age now and um, you know 52 doesn't sound that old to me uh, but you never know I mean when every second every many many every doesn't second matter. counts right exactly it doesn't matter the kid can get hurt playing ball anything could happen that is the most important service that I feel that is provided I know police and fire and everything that goes with it but when, God forbid, your kid, something's going on with a kid, he's choking, or he gets hurt, or your mother, your father, whoever, you know, we want to make sure that that squad's responding. And I think we talked today, response time should be within eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think the rescue squad right now's response time is within six minutes. So it shows you 
how organized this this group is. So, again, I mean, it, it's I don't want to. Well, we have our seniors at the Grundy Towers, you know. That's I don't really want to say anything negative right now, but you know, I, I'm going to see how this plays out, and I will be representing Borough Council on Thursday night. And if any other council members want to attend, but I will definitely be there, and hopefully, I get the opportunity to speak. Great. That's good. Good. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room? Anybody on this side of the room want to speak? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Chief Slack. Um, and also, I'd like to congratulate our police chief. Uh, you guys do one hell of a job, and I'm so very proud to be a borough resident uh, and have such a, a, a fine group of young officers. Um, I want to introduce myself a little bit uh, for the people at home that are watching this that don't know who I am. Uh, my name is Harry Crow. I'm a longtime resident of Bristol Borough. Uh, I joined Bucks County Rescue Squad in 1963, and I have been active ever since, 55 years. Uh, I spent my entire life, as you know, many times I'm controversial, I've been here uh, fighting for the fire department, fighting for the rescue squad. <clears throat> I have never received any pay for the rescue squad. I have always been a long time volunteer. And the reason I'm saying this is to give a little credibility of what I'm about to, to talk about. I'll give you a little bit of history about the, how much how much baloney this is. Well, the headlines here in the Bristol uh, in the Levittown now says Bristol Township releases a statement on plan to remove Bucks County. Rescue squad from our first due area. Um, I had no knowledge of any of this until about four weeks ago. I received a phone call from Bristol Township Fire Company, 3rd District. The fire chief called me and notified me. Oh, I also forgot to tell you that uh, I am presently on the board of directors. My wife, she's also on the board of directors. Uh, I'm the secretary from the board of directors, and I had no knowledge, no inkling of anything that was wrong and uh, any problems that the township had with our rescue squad. And if, if I don't miss a trick, I had my pulse on the thumb of that operation for many years. They can say a lot of things about me, but they can, they can never say that I don't know what's going on. We run a clean ship. We've been physically re responsible uh, for our money, and I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself, uh, and I like to kind of ramble on. What I did was I highlighted some, some key points of this article. I think if, if I'm going to ask our council to defend our rescue squad, I think it's only fair to you that we respond to these allegations. And because I'm on TV, I'm going to be very nice about how I handle this. They say they have some serious concerns over our administration of the rescue squad. First of all, a month ago when we found out about the, uh, the township was uh, upset with us, we asked what the problem is. Uh, naturally, I found out that our president was, and I'm not the president, our president of our organization contacted an attorney. Our attorney contacted the township attorney uh, and tried to work things out to find out what the issues were. And they said they were going to remove us from our first area, and they were holding our $130,000, and they weren't going to fund us any longer, which, in essence, it would put us out of business a little bit down the road, not far. You know, uh, you know we're good stewards. I, I also want to thank the residents of Bristol Barrow. They increased our tax allotment. We're very good stewards of the money. We're very physically responsible. We have always, for many years, said that our books are open, that anybody at any time could come in, and we would be glad to show you our operation. We run a good, clean um, operation. So in the paper it says, you know, they have serious concerns of our administration. I don't know what cloud they're on, but they're not on, on our cloud. Um, and they, they say that the, the concerns of the rescue squad 
and uh, allegedly made a bad situation worse. Our board, we couldn't make anything worse because we had no knowledge that, that they were upset. So that, that's totally not true. It says the administration attempted to discuss the issues with the board and was rebuffed by an, by an agency that provides significant funding. In other words, they fund us uh, and, uh, and they had issues with our board. Our board had no knowledge of, of any issues. You know, so I have no idea, uh, you know, what, what they're saying to the people who read this article. Um, and we, we as the uh, board members of Rescue Squad, we wouldn't bite off the hand that feeds us. You know, uh, you know, we're very responsible to the borough. We have always been responsible and open to the township until all of a sudden this township manager uh, has a problem with us and wants to close us. Uh, it also goes on to say the issue has been simmer, simmering for some time. This guy must be hallucinating. I'd like to know what he's snorting. Because uh, there has not been an issue that any of us know about. So when we ask for your support, I want you to understand, we, we don't have any knowledge of what he's really upset about until today. All of a sudden today, it shows up in the paper that they have a problem with our finances. Well, they, we, we run over a million dollar budget and they give us $130,000 and we appreciate it. But that's only partially what it costs us to run. We have unfunded mandates that we have. Uh, we have all kinds of extensive training that, that is a cost. They, they're getting more bang for their buck than to borrow for what you give us. And for what they give us, they get more than enough service. And I have no idea why in the world they're trying to, trying to do what they're doing to us. It says, uh, the Levittown Fairs Hills Rescue Squad um, it will take over uh, on July 1st. With, uh, well, I'll back up a little bit. When I, when I got the phone call from the fire chief at 3rd District informing me there was an issue with the squad, first time I was notified from him, I asked him what their intentions were. He assured me they were not getting in the middle of it. He assured me that they, they would not put an ambulance there. Then a half hour later, his president of the firehouse called me, the gentleman named Burns. I talked to him and he assured me they weren't going to get in the middle, that they were not putting an ambulance in that station. Two days later they called back and said they were going to put an ambulance in, that this township manager put the pressure on them and scared them so much that they're putting an ambulance in the firehouse right down the street from our headquarters. So as of July 1st, uh, they're replacing our rescue squad with an ambulance. Don't make sense. That's kind of like it's kind of like you uh, dissolving your police department and hire one security guard. No, it, it, it doesn't make sense. And what 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 I use this analogy all the time, and I don't mean to be a smart ass. We're talking ambulance service. You know. My, fat, my, my wife had a need uh, for an ambulance not too long ago because of a breathing problem. And I know more than ever how important it is to have fast ambulance service. We're not flipping hamburgers at McDonald's and there's nothing wrong with that. We're not out picking garbage at the curb. Our employees, all they want to do is serve the borough, serve the people, and save lives. We have, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but you just close your eyes and think, how many people in your family over your lifetime had a need for EMS? It's, it, it, it just don't pass the smell test, what this guy is doing to us. So it's not only going to put our employees out of business, out of work, it's going to put our rescue squad out of business, and it's jeopardizing our community in Bristol Bar also. Now, damn it, 
Do you remember a movie before, uh, years ago, that you lift up your window and yell out, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore? It's just about time that people stand up to bullies like this guy. I'm, I'm really trying to be nice about this, this issue. I'll continue. <coughs> Macaulay says in his statement that there would be no difference in the level of service. Obviously, the close of ambulance service with a staff of 50 part-time and full-time employees and replace it with one ambulance. Now, I don't want to steal his thunder because we have the chief back here that he wants to say a few words and he'll, he'll, he'll say a few words. Excuse me for one second. Good thing I have a good heart for a fat old guy. Good thing I'm pretty healthy to take this aggravation. Um, you know, with his proposal, I would expect him to tell people to, to tell people is no change in service. But there are there are con, con artists that sell the Brooklyn Bridge every day. You know, the, you know, people can be fooled and they believe what they read. If they read it, they believe it, and it it, it just isn't true. That uh, it says here in the article that we are physically stressed. You're damn right we're physically stressed. We bill and people don't pay their bills. And we don't take them to court. We absorb that. But the rescue squad, the animal service is no different than any other uh, business. Employees expect to raise Every year, they expect benefits. Part-time employees expect to be full-time employees. So the electric company will say, hey, Rescue Squad, we like you. We're going to give you a discount in your electric bill. All of our bills, you know, keep on rising every year. So yeah, yeah we're physically stressed every year, but we manage. And the, pe the good people of Bristol Borough realize and trust in us. And you don't know how grateful I am all the time, every day, all day, how grateful I am when the people overwhelmingly increase their taxes because they want good ambulance service. Now, damn it, when you need an ambulance, you want it today, and you want it five minutes from now. You don't want a response time of 20 or 30 minutes. I urge the residents of Bristol Township that live down in Croydon, if there's a delay in service, because of what the township did, I encourage them to get a good lawyer and sue the hell out of them. You, you can't mess with ambulance service. About four years ago, in 19, I'm trying, I'm trying to get back on track. In 2014, there's a casino, there's casino grants that are available. So we applied. We, we tried everything. Actually, I'll go back for a long time. We used to go out in the corner and hold our helmet and told the Bristol Township, please stop us. Say you can't do that anymore. We did everything. I stood in the rain for hours many, many, many times. Uh, so the casino grant was available in 2014. We applied for $79,000, and we were lucky enough to get it. And we used that money to help, help staffing. You know, we have two crews up during the daytime, and they're faulting us. They're faulting us, saying that we were physically stressed and close to going out of business, that that's why we asked for the money. No, we asked for the money because it was available. We didn't do nothing underhand, and we were lucky enough to get it. But let me tell you one thing. I do remember a few things. Bristol Township applied for a casino grant for their sewer plant. Now, if you know anything about uh, uh, casino grants, if you know anything at all about them, municipalities that are affected by the casino or impacted by the casino 
are eligible to apply to get some casino money. Now, how in the hell does a sewer plant qualify to get casino money? If everybody's traveling through Bristol Township, do they stop off to crap? <laughs> but they got money and put the casino money towards the sewer plant. But that, that year we got $79,000 and they fought us for it. You, the council, and, and Bristol Township Council should be glad that we look at opportunities. The firehouses do. They look, and you, do you fault the firehouse? and you spank their hand because they, they looked out for other funding. Like I said, I'll go back and repeat myself, we're, we're good stewards of your money. We try like hell. And if we're not, you'd let us know about it. Okay. I, I, I went on a rant about saving lives, so I'm not going to go back to that one. Um, it says, Bristol, in the article, it says, Bristol Borough could be impacted by any changes. You're damn right we're going to be, uh, you're damn right we're going to be impacted. I don't, I, I don't want to embarrass my wife, but I'm sure she, she understands. <coughs> that uh, over, the, over the years, she needed ambulance service. You know, she developed an issue where she needed, every once in a while she'll have a severe and I mean a severe attack. <laughs> and she got, obviously, she got fast service, and obviously they saved her life because she's here today. It's probably, I could go through and probably tell you a dozen stories where we saved people's lives. And ironically, they just said it tonight, that the police officers, through fast service, through the cooperation of the fire company from Herbie Slack, and from the police department and from our ambulance service, they were able to save another life. What kind of price do you put on one, one person's life? We don't say one. I mean, it is dozens and dozens over a year period. I think I'm done my rant. All right. uh, Ralph, um, uh, Ralph, under your leadership and, and, and of the council, you have always been there for the community. You have always been there for the rescue squad. I said today at that meeting, and I'll say it publicly to the people, that I will spend my dying breath standing up for the Bucks County Rescue Squad. It's been my life. I'm not going to let them uh, take us down without a fight. <coughs> and. and the, people of Bristol Township, I encourage you to come and be as mad as hell as I am, and I ask the Bristol Borough residents to please come and voice your opinion. We have a right to be heard. Again, we're not flipping hamburgers, we're saving lives. And um, I, I just hope you understand how aggravated I am, and I didn't mean to go on a rant, but um, I just wanted, wanted to be said. Harry Crow is not going down with a fight, and you know that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room want to speak? I don't know if you can get up. Does anybody else want to speak on the rescue squad? If not, Marty Lesbinski. Uh, I am actually a Bristol Township uh, born and raised. Um, I actually moved into the borough. I lived in the borough for a long time uh, before moving into Middletown. Uh, as of as of two weeks ago, I became, was the acting chief, and now I am the chief of Bucks County Rescue Squad. Um, I just came up here just to introduce myself. I know a lot of you, um, working with the chiefs, uh, with the mayor, with uh, Tony Riccio. Um, so I just wanted to come up, and I wanted to ask if with what you guys have have read so far, do you have any questions for us? I would like to answer questions for you guys, um, if you have any. I mean, the only question I, is, it, tell us what we need to do to help you guys. I mean, that's the only. Yeah. 
I need, and the squad needs, bodies. We need people there to do nothing more than show up. Pack the house. And I'm not even trying to pack the house per se, but I want them to know that there is a huge community behind us. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about the community. It's not about who can you know, throw whatever in the paper against us. We're here for the community. We've been here for 86 years for Bristol Township and Bristol Borough. All right, we've been here for 20 years in our new the building that we have now. At the end of the day, we just need people here to support us so we can, in turn, support the community. That's all. That's all we ask. All right. Um, it's going to be 7, seven o'clock at the Bristol Township. Uh, I just one thing. I don't, I don't want to touch base on it. One thing I find really disturbing about the whole issue is that they're going to remove their funding and take them away from their first due. Um, people that don't know how the dispatching is done for EMS, <clears throat> it's handled by the county, they may still be required to run as a second due uh, in that area that was normally their first due area and not get compensated for it. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's another whole part of the issue. You know, so they, the county dispatches the, the next local squad. That's going to be them. They're still in the same location. So they get, uh, if one of the ambulance, the replacement ambulance is tied up, they're going to get called to go out to the same area that they're not being compensated for. Without funding. Correct. Yeah, without funding. So yeah. that, that, that's very disturbing to me. So, right. so they're, they're asking them to respond in and take away their money, which is, uh, I, I, it just doesn't sit well with me. I just wanted people to be aware of that. Sorry. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. We'll be there Thursday. Hi. Very sure, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, another thing. Oh, Louis, that I'm sorry. I just wanted to mention another thing that is affected by this uh, is Lower Box Hospital. I've been on the board of governance there for a long time, and, and the, the squad and the hospital work hand in hand with one another. They feed off each other's successes, and they they pay the price when there's not successful uh, for whatever reason. But if you take the squad out and it's how they'll survive with just Bristol Borough's funding, I, I, it's, it's a death knell. We, we, we wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if the, hosp the hospital would be very difficult for the hospital to survive without the rescue squad. Uh, and it's just, it's absurd that this can happen. I know, I know many of the people on the Township Council, and they're, they're good people. I mean, I, I don't see how this thing even came about, but it's so, it's so absurd. I can't, I can't believe that, that it's happening. And there have been people on this, you know, when I think of people, Dee Brown, who's been on there forever, and Harry and Donnie Crow, who've been on there forever, you know, and, and these are good people. These are community-minded people that, that are always looking out for everybody. And, and for this thing to, to develop the way it has, it, it's ridiculous. So I, I really think it's, it's, I'm worried about the squad, but I'm also worried about, I like the idea of having a hospital here. <laughs> if I have a heart attack, I don't want to be waiting on Route 1, you know, for the traffic to clear out. Or I don't want to be waiting for an, an ambulance to clear five points to get to Bristol Borough or to get to Croydon, or to get to Venice Ashby, or to get to, you know, Fleet Wings. We're down here in, you know, mm -hmm. in no man's land if this goes through, so. To answer your question, <coughs> you asked, um, the council apparently has been hogtied by this new manager they have, they've had for a couple of years now, and he's calling the shots and they're going with him. Um, I don't understand why. I don't want to know what possessed him to do this, but it would be, if our squad is taken off as on our books and we, we're not here, you, this whole town, I mean, Croydon, the same way. I mean, we've been here so many years and have shown how wonderful we are and how our, our guys are sticking with us and, and working hard, and it's not fair. It's just not fair. And this, this, um, manager over there thinks he can just tell everybody what to do, how to do it, and no questions asked. And this is the problem. So we need people 
on Thursday and to stand up to him and the, and, and the uh, members of the board. So, would you finish like that, right? All right. Does anybody else have any more questions for the, the chief? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Look. Okay. Anybody else want to speak? I promise I will not be long tonight. Um, again, hello to everybody. I'm not going to mention names because I don't know all your names with your faces. Just put your name on the record. Mimi Olson. Um, I don't know what. Do I have to give an address? Pardon me? Do I have to give an address? I think we have it from last week. Okay. Last all right. Morning. Good. First, I wanted to start out, and I hope I'm talking loud enough for the people at home. Um, that I thought a lot about my approach last week, so I'm here to apologize because I did come off as sort of attacking, and that's not what I want to do. What we want to do is be a positive part of this community, and however we can work at making this project finish up, um, keeping some of the history within the borough, whatever it takes, we are here to do that. And. Um, Again, I just want to apologize for last week because I'm usually not an attackful person. And I publicly was asked last week to get a letter from Mr. Ventresca that Al and I can be, any information about that project can be shared with us. Who do I, it's addressed to you. I'll get it off you. You don't have to walk it up right now, but I'll, I'll take it. Thanks. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, I do have one other question. <laughs> Last week it was mentioned <clears throat> that that plot of ground that we're talking about is borough owned. How much of that ground does the borough own? If you don't know tonight, just I'll, you know. We know. Do you want to explain it while we're in this? I don't understand. What do you mean? How much of the property? The property. They, I don't know what you know what it measures out to the square footage of that. The, pro property. the borough owns all the property down there. In, right in front of where the new townhouse is. All of it. It's all one parcel into the parking lot. It's okay. all one That's parcel. Good. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Well, just so you know, as of now, we haven't been in your. The builder has not contacted us to, for any type of meeting, so I'll pass this on to the solicitor and the manager. And oh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, make sure that we hook up with Mr. Dillon tomorrow. For what? For a meeting, schedule a meeting. There won't be any meeting scheduled tomorrow. No, I'm not saying to, tomorrow can we make a We're going to contact your developer first. Okay. And find out how he wants to handle that. He says he wants us to meet with you regarding the property. We will. Would you accept a phone call from him? We could call the manager. We told you this last week, Mimi. He could contact the manager by email. It's, it takes two seconds. Okay. We'll make sure he does. Anybody else on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Follow okay, participation. All right. Before we start our agenda tonight, I just I just want to bring up the. Uh, something that usually gets discussed in executive session. <clears throat> but I felt it was necessary to discuss it in public since there's no miscommunication of what's being said and what's not being said. So as you read in the newspaper several weeks ago, Mr. Riccio, Mr. Gerard has filed a lawsuit against a borough by, he's being represented by Mr. Hornstein. I'm still trying to understand what it's all about. I know it's about awarding the contract to Mr. Polensky. So we, we have not been served, myself, Mr. Catrocci, Betty, or Mr. Pezza, as of today. I'm sure we will. But the borough uh, was served. So Mr. Dillon turned that over to our insurance company. Now how it works, and we expected this, just like the same thing when the contract with Mascara, 
there's really no coverage for these kind of issues. And at the time the borough had to defend that and use taxpayers' money on the trash contract, which I think may have been thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and it was a fast right here. So Mr. Salerno appealed that decision to our insurance company, which is PERMA, saying that he feels that they should cover this. So I just want to let council know where we are, and the manager is reaching out tomorrow to hire a law firm. And now this will be on taxpayers' expense. The insurance company is not paying for it. No matter who's being sued, we're sitting here, we need representation. So he's going to have to find a law firm to represent the borough, and then a law firm to represent either each one of us individually or as a group. We don't know yet because we don't know if there's any conflicts. But I just don't want to hear six months from now when depositions and these bills are running up that we're spending taxpayers' money to defend the case. So the only thing I'm asking tonight is what we had two opinions, one from our solicitor, one from special counsel, who felt that we voted the way properly, nothing was done wrong. Mr. Gerard felt that, I don't know, I guess, and Mr. Riccio, it wasn't. I'm just trying to understand, <laughs> win or lose this case, what are you trying to accomplish out of this whole thing? Because, you know, I'm just telling you right now, whatever happens, it's on the taxpayer's dime. And I don't want to hear later on, I can't believe you spent, because it'll come back in my lap, all this money. But don't forget, when the borough gets sued, the only people that could defend the borough are the taxpayers. I mean, you're, the manager's not being sued. We, the, the borough as a whole is being sued. So when you sue the borough, you're suing the taxpayers. So the taxpayers have to represent the borough. So, I mean, you don't have to discuss it. I'm just trying to understand what are you two trying to accomplish? Okay. You want to discuss it? No, okay. I have no comment. All right, let's move on to our agenda. So we all know where we're at. I'd like to make a motion to approve the council meeting minutes of 4218 and 5718 to accept the treasurer's report for March 2018 to accept the police and DJ's report for March and April 2018 to accept the fire chief's report for March and April 2018 to accept the inspection department report for March and April 2018 to accept the public works department report for March and April 2018 and to accept the HARB report and decisions of 4-30-18. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I need to make a motion to authorize the purchase of 1023 Elm Street in the amount of $55,000. Second by Mr. Catrocci. Questions or comments? All those. Mr. Devine. I just have a comment. Well, two things. First one is I'd like to have a roll call vote. And the other comment is I just, I just want to put it on record that I feel that we have done a disservice to the to the residents of Elm Street for not taking care of those properties as well as we should have. And the second part of that comment is is that I also want to make it clear to the to the public that at our last meeting there was a situation that I quoted something that was in the paper. And it's sad that a councilman has to read the paper to find out what's going on. But the second article that came through the Bucks County Court Times pretty much said it again that he, whoever wrote that article felt confident that he talked to Mr. White, to either Mr. White from the redevelopment authority is telling a story or Mr. DiGiuseppe is, is not telling the truth. Because that information was, was shared 10 years ago. And it wasn't anybody else here, I don't think, that would have shared it but you, Ralph. Let me just, I don't want to get into it because I want to get out of here, but there is no <coughs> agreement with Bristol Borough and the Redevelopment Authority for Chestnut and Elm Street. This council did not vote on that agreement. 
the only thing that was ever discussed up here in public numerous times that is that's something we would turn over to them at some point that's the only thing that's been discussed the other thing is you say that we did them a disservice we should have did how do you want us to go fix somebody's home I don't know where yeah, we bought the houses. What do you mean? We bought the properties. We should have maintained them after they were run. We maintained them in which way? Fixed them? Maintain them so there's not squirrels, cats, and everything else running through them. What do you okay. mean? That's well, it's simple. Roll call vote. Anybody else on that question? Did somebody second it? Yeah, you said. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Riccio. Yes. No. Mr. Pezza is absent. He had the emergency at home. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Mr. DiGiuseppe? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to award the handicap <coughs> curb bid for Wilson and Garfield per Gilmore and Associates letter of May 4, 2018 to T. Schaefer. Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $14,940. Second by Mr. Catrochi. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Mr. President, I'd like to accept the Gilmer proposal to design a bridge over Otter Creek per proposal dated <clears throat> February 1st, 2018, budget of $140,000. I was second. Second by Ms. Collins. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. President, I'd like to adopt the resolution for GCED, <clears throat> excuse me, flood mitigation grant for Adams Hollow Creek in the amount of $170,000. Second by Ms. Collins. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those three. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the hiring of part-time police officer Kevin Riley. Second by Mr. Catrochi. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number nine. And last but not least, I'd like to make a motion to approve two-year contract extension for Police Chief Steve Henry. Second by Mr. Catrochi. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Mr. Gerard. Yes, well, uh, I, I thought Chief Henry's contract uh, after he got over his probation period was, was rock solid. Uh, uh, it was up to the up to the chief. There. It was his job. Uh, it was a contract says just every two years, or I, I thought it was his job until he didn't want it anymore. Do you want to explain it or me? No, the contract provides that after the probationary period, then it will remain in full force and effect for an additional year, which is now, and that it can be renewed for two two year terms by council. So now we're going from May to 18 to, to May of 20. Thank you. Yes, I just want to comment. I just want to uh, tell the chief thank you very much. That whole search that that we finally picked you was the best pick that we could have made. And I just appreciate you being here and the turnaround and the changes. And like what we talked about, there's good cops in there. We just needed to all come together. I think that you did a, a hell of a job doing it. That's thank you. Adjourn. No, we need oh, the vote. Oh, darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Under other business, does Aye. anybody have anything? Go ahead, Lori. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I have a second by Mrs. Rodriguez. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>